Hello, this is a quick little demo of the Overrides API uh, that I've been working on. Uh, it's basically a uh, basic framework to be able to redefine the uh, behaviors of mobs, most notably those that are specified in Mobs Redo. Um, so I'm using for this demo uh, Doomed Mobs, uh, D-Mobs. Uh, and I'll show you why I put this together. So first I'm going to spawn in a fox. Now the fox uh, is actually defined as a monster and I kind of like these these little guys uh, but I don't really want them to be uh, treated as monsters. So I'm going to create my own mobs but I'm not going to touch the actual dmobs code. Why am I not going to do that? Uh, the reason is uh, dmobs is uh, one of those oops my dmobs uh, one one of those mods that is in active development and if at some if I start changing the original code and then I want to update to receive the new animals that were defined uh, that those changes might break I might have merge conflicts I might um, all kinds of stuff. Or I might just lose my changes and then I'll have to go and find all the changes that I made and do them again. Um, instead of that, I'm just going to go and use um, the overrides. I'm going to create a depends txt, uh, reliant on mobs, reliant on dmobs, and reliant on the entity override mod, which I will show the full code for in a bit. Uh, but that's the main the main item that uh, is driving uh, this effort. So I create my init Lua and I simply want to for now to turn the fox into a friendly animal. So override rewrite what I want to rewrite dmobs fox and I want to give it just a new sub definition. Uh, I want its type simply to be animal. And that's it. Now I've re I've just redefined the fox to be an animal. If uh, later on uh, I update dmobs mod, uh, the files can change place, the fox definition could be shunted into a different file, it could be rewritten all, uh, all together. Uh, my change making the fox an animal or ensuring that the fox is an animal uh, will be applied after the fact again, so long as the fox is still defined. Um, in the original dmobs it will be in effect. So now I can play and now the fox is a friendly animal. It's not going to attack me. So that's all fair and well. Uh, what about this guy? Orc. Okay, orcs when you kill them oopla Orcs, when you kill them, they just give you uh, meat. So default sword diamond. Let's dispatch him quickly. He drops meat, and that's all he drops. Um, I would like uh, the orc to drop a bit more than meat. I'm going to override, rewrite, dmobs orc. And this time I'm going to give uh, a special kind of definition. I can do drops. And now rather than just plainly overwriting uh, the drops with a new table, or rather, actually, I could write a table that would have to contain a value um, parameter with itself another table, which would be uh, the uh, table itself that specifies the drops. And in this table I say uh, I'm going to say that I want uh, the orc to drop a sword instead. Oops. Back to menu, wrong one. So now if I spawn in an orc, he 
he drops a steel sword. But I've lost the meat. There's no, long, no longer dropping any meat. To keep the meat, I'll just say um, table order equals append. So I'm going to append my value or my uh, subtable uh, table to the one that already exists for the org, which specifies meat. We'll play. Bring in an orc. Dispatch him. And he drops both. So I can now uh, either replace uh, the the drops table or combine the one that already exists with uh, some new values. Uh, let's have a bit of fun. I'm going to override. Uh, rewrite dmobs hedgehog. I'm going to have the hedgehog as an NPC. I'm going to give him five damage. Strong hedgehog. I'm going to say that it can actually attack. I might want to say that he's going to defend me. Um, and let's make sure that he doesn't die uh, too fast. Uh, I don't know, 16. Um, yeah, that should do it. And when I right click, this time rather than defining a f function as you would normally see in a mobs definition, I'm going to define a table that has the function. So, I say fchain type equals before. So, I'm going to define some new functionality, and I want it to run before the functionality that already exists on the hedgehog. And fchain func is just going to be a function. And that is going to be mind test dot self clicker dot chat send player clicker get player name I am a hedgehog. I eat, and I'm going to take advantage of the self. Um, follows. Uh, I actually need that to be dump, I think. Do I need to get the Lua entity? I'll find out in a bit. Function return true. Now, once it has run uh, my custom function, it returns true, and since it returns true and it is a before type, the handler will say, okay, it's returned true, let's execute the right-click function that already existed on the hedgehog, which is actually the feeding function. So it will also t say, as per the normal function, not tamed. So, let's play. I am going to spawn entity dmobs hedgehog. So there's one. And if I right click him, it says I'm a hedgehog. I eat. Oh, it doesn't eat anything. Not tamed. Cool. What about that other change, the dogfight and the whatnot? What happens if I spawn an ogre next to it? Or an orc, rather? 
Oh, look at that mean hedgehog go. It's gone and killed the, the orc. I have a battle hedgehog. Now this last one, uh, Gnorp. Ah, it's an NPC, it's uh, nothing too frightening. That's not particularly interesting. So I'm going to override, rewrite, nope. I'm going to make a variant of the Gnorm. I'm going to clone the Gnorm. Dmobs, Gnorm, boss. Uh, now what's that going to be? This is going to be type monster Anna ah, no, Dion. I'm going to clone Dmobs Norm and that's going to be a my Dmobs Norm boss. And then I'm going to override rewrite my Dmobs Norm boss, and now I'm going to de define it as a monster, and a visual size of x2, z2, x2, y2, I've got y2 in my notes, yeah, let's use it this way. So, you can see the regular norm is there. What I'm going to do is spawn my one. And look at him go. He's fast, he's brutal, he's attacking stuff, or he's, is he being attacked? No, he's, he's, he's being attacked. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, not strong enough. Uh, visual size. Ah, right, yes, because I need to define value. There we go. Now let's play that. There we go. He's bigger now. But my hedgehog is still there to protect me. And now they're duking it out. And my hedgehog has successfully killed the super norm. Let's do that again, shall we? He's big. He's bad. And he's coming for me. But not to worry. I've got my battle hedgehogs. So there you go. Um, to do all those changes uh, to mobs that already exist, just a few lines of code and you've customized the mobs for your game or for your server you don't touch the original code the code for the override uh, mod itself is uh, pretty simple uh, I am uh, improving it as we go by um, the cloning functionality does require a little tweak to mobs redo I've sent a change up to uh, the uh, the mod creator for Mobs Redo, mod uh, Templus One, um, whether uh, he accepts it or not uh, remains to be seen. Uh, in the meantime, the only thing that does need to be changed in Mobs Redo is this line. You need to in the register entity of register mob you need to add a line that says textures equals def.textures comma and you'll be good to go for uh, cloning mobs uh, into different kinds so there you go, hope that's useful um, you can now completely redefine mobs that exist without touching the original code so when the next time uh, Doomed adds more fantastic mobs to his mod, uh, you won't get merge conflicts when you try to run the update. Happy coding!